Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of the Trap Nerds Podcast. This is not an episode. I'm pretty sure this is a promo. You know what it is. We in this piece. Trap Nerds, Trap Nerds. Real n- like you never heard. We giving you reliable gaming news. With the best movie and TV reviews from a Blur perspective. All things inside and out of Blurred culture. culture. Listen to the Trap Nerds Podcast or the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's good? It's Colleen Witt and Eating While Broke is back for Season 3. Brought to you by the Black Effect Podcast Network and iHeartRadio. We're serving up some real stories and life lessons from people like Van Lathan, DC Youngfly, Bone Thugs and Harmony, and many more. They're sharing the dishes that got them through their struggles and the wisdom they gained along the way. We're cooking up something special, so tune in every Thursday. Listen to Eating While Broke on the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm Andrea Gunning, host of the all-new podcast, There and Gone. It's a real-life story of two people who left a crowded Philadelphia bar, walked to their truck, and vanished. A truck and two people just don't disappear. The FBI called it murder for hire. But which victim was the intended target and why? Listen to There and Gone South Street on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 426, How Loyalty Points and Programs Cost You More. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And today we are talking about loyalty points Mm. and programs and whether they're a good idea or not. How loyal are you? How loyal? And and do they actually save you money (sighs) or cost you more? Spoiler. There, it's probably bo- a bit of both. It's both. It's <laughs> both. If but, you listen to our big box store, what is the the warehouse warehouse clubs? clubs. Yes, it's episode four hundred two. A little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this, yeah, this will be a good one. But first, this episode is brought to you by Reviews Raffle. Boo-boo. Just like all good raffles, whether you participate at the county fair, a car show, a baseball game. Only better because this one is free. So here's the deal. We are less than 60 reviews away from 1,000 reviews on Apple Podcasts. And we are not too good to bribe you with a $100 Mm -hmm. gift card giveaway to help us get there because we just cannot break four digits right now. So to enter, simply leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts screenshot your review before you submit it. Because once you hit submit, it's going to kind of disappear. You're not going to see it show up. So write your review, screenshot it, then hit the submit button, then send us an email of your screenshot and you'll be entered to win a drawing. So if you send it to Jen at frugalfriendspodcast.com, she'll get the email and then we'll pick a winner. Uh, You have up until July 31st, 2024, to do this, to re- leave your review, take the screenshot, send it to us. And then we're going to give it about a week for all of the reviews to populate. Then we're going to pick a winner for the $100 gift card drawing. And you can tell us what you want the gift card to be to, whether it's Amazon or Grubhub or just any store ever. We'll Almost get it to you. any store. Almost. <laughs> yeah, okay. we still Jen have has to... boundaries. Our accountant will see this. <laughs> so I am, yeah, not too good to beg is what it is. I really want to hit a thousand reviews. And so I I made Jill agree to give away a hundred dollars for this. <laughs> it is worth it. I'm not it. that tight fisted with our money. <laughs> <laughs> so please, if you get the friend letter, you can just reply to any friend letter before um, the 31st and uh, send us that screenshot. Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, let's do it. Let's hit let's a do thousand. It. Let's hit a thousand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Let us put our money back into your pocket. 
Amen. By leaving a review. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So loyalty points and programs. If you're into things like this, um, like Jill was mentioning, episode 402, the grocery store versus warehouse club savings analysis. I went on a six-month deep dive, Mm -hmm. uh, immersive investigation to break this down. Uh, So episode 402 is a really good one. And then episode 319, tips to stop shopping on Amazon. So while we are covering like these free loyalty programs, we're not covering memberships like Costco, Sam's Club, or even Amazon Prime is considered a membership. Uh, So we're looking more at the gamification strategies. But those are on the membership side. And today we'll be looking at an article that has statistics for loyalty programs. And then kind of going through some of these, like what uh, some like what are the questions? Like why do companies use loyalty programs, et cetera? Answering it with these statistics and then kind of giving you some insight on whether you are um, in control of your use of the program or you're kind of being marketed to and influenced by it. We love to de-influence ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we've done this a couple of times where we kind of look at the other side of marketing, where we take a look at what are marketers saying to businesses that are selling to consumers about us consumers that can help us be aware of the ways that we may be tricked, manipulated, persuaded, influenced into spending money that maybe we would not have otherwise spent. So if we can be aware of some of these tactics and tips and tricks that people in the business space and marketing space are giving to these companies, then we can be more informed consumers. That's the whole goal behind this. So this article that we're looking at from X2, EXTU, it's called Important Loyalty Program Statistics for 2024. This is really geared towards businesses selling products to consumers for them to understand how important it is to have a loyalty program. We're not saying that they're all bad, but it is helpful to know how businesses, like businesses aren't doing this just to be kind they're not, to you. Yeah, they're, they're not doing, doing it for you. Uh huh. N- that doesn't mean that you can't get benefit, but just to be really aware of this. But before we get into all of those statistics, I do want to talk a bit about just what a loyalty program is, just to set the stage. And many of you are, I'm sure, are familiar with this. It just is a company's program that they offer to you that you usually sign up for with either your phone or your email, and you get access to deals, discounts, sometimes free products for making purchases with that brand. And it's how they encourage you to stay loyal to that brand. So this is your Starbucks rewards program. This is your Ikea family. This is Rakuten points. This is anywhere, any restaurant or product that you buy, chances are you've been asked, do you want to sign up for our rewards program? Mm -hmm. And it's free. So a lot of times we might choose to do that because there's some sort of incentive. We even talk about this in the friend letter. If you sign up for X's reward program, you'll get a free milkshake. Mm -hmm. That's great. Do it if you just want to get a free milkshake. But then we'll talk about some of the underbelly of that and what to be aware of when you do sign up for this. But it is different from paid membership programs. That's your Walmart Plus. That's your warehouse programs. And Sephora Beauty Insider. There's even these organizations, companies, businesses that previously have provided free loyalty programs. But many, I was in researching for this episode, there's a lot that are moving in the direction of paid loyalty programs. Oh, dang. Where you might, and it might be a small amount. Like I think Sephora or Ulta is one of them where it's going to be like a three to $5 kind of like annual charge or quarterly or something like that, but still paying to be a part of it. So that Weird. especially is something we're going to need to be on the lookout for. If you are accustomed to being a part of these loyalty programs, they may start introducing fees for their loyalty programs, Mm -hmm. maybe moving it into a membership program. So yeah, that's a little tea for you. Yeah. So this is outside of stores too. Like, so like what Jill said, racked in points. There's also, I use this app called Paceline that it that gives you rewards based on like working out. So if you work out 150 minutes a week, you get like so many points. Um, 
And so that is a marketing strategy, not just for one store, but for a lot of different startups in the wellness industry will put their products in and you'll get disc like you can trade in your rewards for discounts to those stores. So it's, uh, you know, like Fetch, Ibotta, all of those are essentially loyalty programs, but with like a, a rebate kind of mm-hmm. edge. So so that's, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Um, so why do companies use loyalty programs? So in this article from x2.com, which I'm pretty sure this company does loyalty programs, programs. I'm sure that's why they are publishing this. Um, they, they say it's five to six times more expensive to find a new client than it is to reactivate an old client. And that's based on an American Express study. So loyalty programs have you know, a great incentive. Companies have a great incentive to do a loyalty program because it's much less expensive to just remind somebody who's already purchased from you or signed up for your email that you exist and you have things that they want, uh, that you want. Uh, There's also another statistic from HBR, um, which I think is Harvard Business Review. Companies with strong loyalty marketing programs grow revenue two and a half times faster than their competitors and generate 100 to 400% higher returns to shareholders. Uh, And then 65% of businesses use their loyalty program to also attract new customers. So it's not Mm -hmm. just to get current customers or prior customers to buy again, but we've all, and we, again, do this in the friend letter. We'll tell you if somebody is offering something free, if you sign up for their loyalty program, and that's how they attract new customers. I did this recently. Red Robin, I signed up for their... uh, When I did my Instagram reel on birthday freebies, I signed up for their reward program and then got their email that they do like... I think it's like 5 or $10 burgers on a day. Um, And I actually wanted to try them. So we went on that day. We really liked them. And so I was really glad that I signed up for their loyalty program and got a discount and was introduced to a new restaurant Mm -hmm. that I had slept on for years. I mean, that Red Robin's been over there for like years and years and years. And I just like never considered it. Yeah. And then we went there and we actually really liked it. And they had balloons for the kids. I do like Red Robin. Yeah. Yeah, Good burgers. So so these are not always bad, Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Our real goal is to make sure that we are not impulse spending because another like the reason we went is because I didn't feel like cooking. And then I saw that coupon in my email and, you know, barrier to entry there it is, is lower. The barrier to mm-hmm. entry is lowered. So mm-hmm. we're, that's, that is the purpose of this deep dive. Well, and once you sign up, yes, you get the freebie. And then how many times has Red Robin texted you, emailed you afterwards, mm-hmm. trying to get you back in? And how easy is it to kind of keep saying those no's over and over and over again mm-hmm. when they're offering you something that now you know you enjoy? Yeah. And that can be the downfall of it. So it's interesting. The article also talks about how pervasive loyalty programs are. And they cite, they cite that the average U.S. consumer has about is a part of about 17 loyalty programs, but actively only uses half of them. So that did have me thinking like, how many loyalty programs do I have? And probably a lot more than I think. And most Mm -hmm. of them are through email, but you've talked about this, the the roundup, the roll up, unroll me. Unroll me. Yeah. That was going to be something that I mentioned on this episode. Okay. Okay. So I won't get too deep into it, but I think depending on how how we arrange our inboxes can be really helpful for us to take advantage of the loyalty programs when we want to and not see them when we don't want mm-hmm. to. Uh, but the ones that I get kind of active notifications from probably daily, I'll get three to four text messages or emails that I will notice that this company is sending me Mm -hmm. something. And I don't know, sometimes I'm just lazy to like not hit that unsubscribe button. Yeah, I mean, it isn't for me, it isn't causing me to spend the money. But it is annoying to get Mm -hmm. the text message in the day. Yeah. And you never, 
like you never know when they're going to be doing like their, you know, their best sale or when you're going to want the uh-huh. discount, right? So it's like, I don't want to unsubscribe to something I do want to get discounts on. Because mm-hmm. that's a big like, the first thing you do when you want to save money is you unsubscribe from all of these loyalty emails, right? Mm-hmm. But what if, so yes, that's easy. There's there, you can look through your emails Definitely no reason to be getting text messages from companies. There's <laughs> there's just no reason. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Can, no, I get that. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> you can definitely unsubscribe from every text message, like people that are marketing to you via text. That is just too much. But so like I, there's all of these emails in my inbox and sometimes I want them there. You know, like I truly do. I am looking to like upgrade my wardrobe from 99% athleisure to, you know, downgrade it to like 90% athleisure and get some more like sustainable brands going and buy more from Thread Up or Poshmark. So I want to be like, I want to get those emails, but I don't want to be tempted by them. And so this is where I use Unroll Me. And I have been using this for uh, over a decade, like before I met Travis. And it has been revolutionary. It's U-N-R-O-L-L dot M-E. And it will roll up all your subscriptions into one email. And you get that email every day. You can choose whether you want it in the morning, afternoon, or evening. And you can go into Unroll Me and you can say, I want these emails sent to my inbox and I want these subscriptions sent to my roll up or I want to just be totally unsubscribed from these. It's very user friendly. And you can even switch like if I've got something in my roll up that I want to get to my inbox for a period of time, I just switch over for a period of time. And so it allows me to stay on these loyalty program emails but not be tempted by their very well crafted headlines. I can look at my roll up if I want, if I have time, if I'm intentionally going there, uh, or I don't, or I could just ignore it. So that is a really, really good tool if you want to utilize some of these loyalty programs, but don't want to get rid of all of them. Now that I have kids, I'm hyper aware of the information I put online. But unfortunately, there's only so much I can do. Our personal information is everywhere on the internet, and I don't have time to monitor and take it off every website. That's why I personally use Delete Me. Delete Me is a service that finds and removes any personal information from hundreds of data broker websites and makes sure it stays off. Delete Me isn't just a one-time service. It's always working for you, constantly monitoring and removing the personal information you don't want on the internet. I signed up, completed a questionnaire, and they took it from there, submitting opt-out requests to data broker sites and keeping my personal info private. To take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me. Now, add a special discount for our listeners. Today, get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash frugal and use promo code FRUGAL at checkout. The only way to get 20% off is to go to joindeleteme.com slash FRUGAL and enter code FRUGAL at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash FRUGAL, code FRUGAL. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of the Trap Nerds Podcast. This is not an episode, it's a promo. You know what it is. Promo time. We in this piece. Trap nerds. Trap nerds. Real niggas like you never heard. Join the Trap Nerds podcast every Monday and listen to us discuss all things inside and out of blurred culture. So what if Quentin Tarantino uh, squashes his beef with Marvel and be like, I'll okay, just see how many push shots of road we'll see I'll be down with. <laughs> <laughs> Make you know going to be interesting. With the best movie and TV reviews from a blurred perspective. I, I think if Bo DeMeo hadn't got fired, Kevin Feige would be in trouble right now. Breach. We giving you reliable gaming news and real genuine game reviews. I'll, I'll, I'll stand for lightning. Why does she have three games? Because she a bad <laughs> I hate you so much right now. <laughs> Listen to the Trap Nurse Podcast or the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
What's good? It's Colleen Witt and Eating While Broke is back for season three. Brought to you by the Black Effect Podcast Network and iHeartRadio. We're serving up some real stories and life lessons from people like Van Lathan. TMZ was starting a tour. Harvey came and took the tour. By July, I'm on TV every day. I endear myself to the audience. He comes in, he goes, we're going to give you a raise. I think maybe a year, two years after that, I was a producer. DC Young Flight. It wasn't really no way for us to make income off of Vine like that. Mm-hmm. It was more so uh, notoriety. Once that popped off, it was like people was following it. And I didn't know how big it was. I didn't even know people was doing this on their spare time. I was like, don't do that, kids. That's bad. It was it was crazy that it had to be that real and that harsh. Phone thugs and harmony. Our mission was we was telling everybody in the hood, we finna go meet Easy e We about to come back and do a video. Of course, we didn't know, so we was lying like a mother. But little do we know, we speak in reality, and we gonna come back with a bus and camera crew. And many more. They're sharing the dishes that got them through their struggles and the wisdom they gained along the way. We're cooking up something special, so tune in every Thursday. Listen to Eating While Broke on the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple podcast or wherever you get your podcast presented by state farm like a good neighbor state farm is there so speaking of being tempted by these well-crafted headlines how much more money do we actually spend because of them is this even a real problem Mm -hmm. so returning customers spend 67 percent more than new customers Um, And this is looking at the lifetime value of a customer because, again, it is less expensive to re-engage an older customer, an older customer, like a prior customer, a current customer, than it is to find new ones. And we they do these through these loyalty programs and they are much less expensive than doing Instagram and Facebook ads, website advertising, all this. That stuff is expensive. But sending out an email that you got for free on a platform you pay monthly for, you pay like pennies per email, that is really affordable. So that's why it, like not only does, is it like it's cost effective to market to current customers, they're also shown to spend more. So loyalty program members generate about 12 to 18% more incremental revenue growth per year than non-members. So people who are getting these emails are... And and they work off of like gamifying it, right? Like you want to get to the next... At least I feel like this in my Starbucks rewards. Like Mm -hmm. (laughs) I want to get up to the 200 stars. And I know if I put my... If I reload my card and I pay from the app, I get double stars. So... That's how Starbucks has become this quote unquote bank. I don't know if you've like uh, or seen it oh, on interesting. Uh, the there was a lot of like uh, press. I don't know if it was recently, but like the worst bank in the world <laughs> is Starbucks <laughs> because it's all these people reloading their Starbucks cards in the app because you get the double stars from the loyalty program and wow. they just let the money sit there. Genius. And so they are essentially a bank, but they pay you no interest mm-hmm, mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get you know, no benefits except unless you pay them for their coffee. Oh, wow. Right? Genius on yeah. Starbucks's part. Oh, for sure genius. And yeah. just debilitating for the rest of us. <laughs> Adjacent to that study, though, I, in doing some other research, there was this statistic put out by Antovo and Tavo that said over a lifetime, consumers that are a part of a member loyalty program will spend 6.3 times more than non-loyalty members, which similar to what you've described, how Mm -hmm. it can increase revenue for these companies who have loyalty points. But I think part of that is because if you know you're going to shop there, then you're going to shop there more. Mm -hmm. But this piece of how much more incentivized are we to spend above and beyond just because we have the loyalty program, I think this is saying, yeah, it is higher than if we were just to opt out unless we are very intentional and Mm -hmm. mindful and aware. Yeah. I think it kind of, uh, it takes away, there's a conversation to be had about taking away from local, locally owned businesses because 
they cannot provide in loyalty programs that are as, um, I don't know, flashy uh, or <laughs> exist at all. Um, I know that there is a Thai restaurant I went to and after your 10th like entree, you got a free entree. And that's kind of like the extent of these like local mm -hmm. small businesses, like what they can offer. But I think we we do have to think twice before we are loyal to a company of just any, like just yeah. any company yeah. and really consider where am I shopping? Mm -hmm. Like Amazon, like again, we're not chatting about Amazon because they don't have a loyalty program, but it does make it easier when you are a member, a paying member to Amazon. Why would you shop anywhere else, right? Yeah. You're paying, you're paying member or, you know, if I'm so close to getting this reward with this loyalty program, why would I go anywhere else? Yeah. You know, and that is their goal, but we have re should really consider if it's worth the discount or the freebie um, or should we just mm -hmm. like stay, you know, stay local when we can? And I think that's going to vary person to person as well. Like what you're capable of saying yes and no to, like what, what are your kind of kryptonites and what, what works for you? And so I think, you know, one of the reasons that we might spend more as a loyalty member versus a non-member is like we said, we would, might already want to be shopping at that store, but this article and their statistics are also saying it's it's how these businesses are going about doing this and utilizing their loyalty program. So 50% of the businesses surveyed list that building a stronger emotional brand connection with customers is their primary goal. Because if you have an emotional connection, if you can connect with people on a deeper level than just here's a thing, buy it, if they can sell you a lifestyle, a feeling, an idea of who you're becoming, yep. then you are more likely to keep spending there. Oh, yep. <laughs> shout out to Lululemon. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, are you, have you bought Lululemon because no. of that? No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I just feel like it is stretch stretchy pants. <laughs> and <laughs> they are athleisure. That is comfy stretchy pants. Yeah. But they're selling this kind of elevated fit girly mm -hmm. lifestyle. Yeah. And, and you see that little silver circle on the back of the pants and you're like, oh, everybody at the gym is wearing this. Yeah. Why am I not? Because you're not giving in to marketing culture. Mm -hmm. That's why. Good and, for you. And the emotional connection. I see this primarily with uh, commercials mm -hmm. where, especially around Super Bowl, you know, the ones that want to make you cry. It's like, what was that? That was that was a Toyota. They want you to buy their car. Why are we crying? <laughs> oh, Super. I think it's Subaru that does the crying. <laughs> yeah, they do, they do the most cryy. The yeah, insurance companies are trying to get you to cry. Meal plan delivery kits are trying to get <laughs> you to cry. I just think if tears are happening, then, you know, let that be a little indicator sign yeah. to us. Hmm. Okay, I had an emotional experience, but does that mean I need to spend my money yeah, on them? Yeah, it kind of, it's, so we're laughing about it, but it is a little more like insidious than that. In that when you are, when your emotional guard is let down, you are more susceptible to influence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the real purpose behind it. Like, think about, and this is why I love cults, think about why people join cults. Very smart people join cults because these people target people who are emotionally vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so when you make someone cry, you make them emotionally vulnerable. They're yeah. more susceptible to influence. Which that doesn't have anything to do with intelligence. It's no. a different part of our personhood that we're tapping into when we have an emotional experience and then kind of flipping the script to then get you to make one of those other impulsive decisions. Uh, but we can still have control and influence over ourselves in those situations to mm -hmm. be able to recognize and pay attention and be curious. This is one of the reasons we talk about curiosity so much, to be curious about what is happening inside of me, value your emotional experience or whatever you're dreaming up for yourself, your future you, your desires, but then be able to ask those additional questions of what does this mean though about how I want to spend my money 
Even asking questions about what is this company trying to get me to do? Is that actually what I want? Another thing to be paying attention to, the reason that loyalty programs work so much for businesses to make more money is that they will use their loyalty programs to gain insight and data about their customers. So a lot of times when you are saying yes to opting into a loyalty program, you're giving access to certain information about yourself, which can help them sell better to you or a group of you to kind of identify, oh, these people are interested in this. Here's how frequently they buy. Here's how I can push them to buy this next thing. So that's something for us to be aware of as well, how much yeah. information we're giving away. I was thinking about this when I read it and and realizing like back in the 70s, 80s, there was a company had one ad and they would put that one ad in, and they would repurpose it for TV, for print, you know, but they had one ad campaign. Now, with technology and customization of algorithms, you can have hundreds of campaigns. And the more information you give a company about you, the more targeted they can give you one or two of those hundred campaigns that are most like speaking to you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like social media algorithms. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It's so much easier to target us to where it almost feels like it's talking straight to us, right? But they're also wise enough to know you can't talk straight to somebody and make them feel weird because then they don't buy from you. So they're doing, you know, they're doing the most that they can and and we're giving them this this information to do it with, especially like when we sign up for a birthday reward and we tell somebody our birthday and then they know we're, you know, Gen Z, millennial, Gen X and they kind of know where to hit us with the nostalgia or the trends, you know, Mm -hmm. like it gets, it gets really deep in there. (laughs) And I just wanted to, um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is this study. Um, it was in the Chicago booth review and it's called when loyalty programs are bad for consumers. Uh, and this, so I don't believe that this is super common, but this is, a possible side effect of loyalty programs. And so um, what these researchers did was they studied two gas stations uh, in Italy, I believe, uh, that had loyalty programs. And so for some reason, these loyalty programs had a start and an end date. Um, And especially you would get rewarded for being loyal to where you purchased gas. And so what they saw was that when the, like at the end of the loyalty program, the average price difference per liter of gasoline um, between these gas stations and others that when the, they were on the like program, they were charging, I think it was more. Um, And then they charged even more after like, so the difference in gasoline prices between these uh, stations, I'm totally, I read this right before we started recording. I don't know why, <laughs> but essentially it was when these gas stations increased their prices because of their lo- the ending of their loyalty program, the other gas stations around them also raised their prices too to compete with these two like gas stations. Not as much because they still wanted to be like a little lower, I guess. Um, But like the 20 closest gas stations to these literally were were raising their prices because of these two gas stations. And the and the pricing pattern was around the loyalty program when the discounts were were, you know, there versus when they weren't. And so it really just showed this kind of insidious nature um, that these loyalty programs could cause a indirect effect for other people too in the increasing of prices. Um, And they don't have to keep these programs forever. They can end them at any time they want or change them in any way they want. I was talking about the Priceline app, Priceline, Paceline. Um, And it used to be a really cool app where if you worked out for 150 minutes a week, you could get points. And then after like a month or two, 
you would get um, like five bucks to Amazon, like a $5 Amazon gift card. Or it used to even earlier than that, you could get a a $1 Amazon gift card, like basically every week or every other week. Yeah. And it was every other week. And now you can't get, you can only get, you can only buy discounts to stores, um, to wellness stores um, with your, with your points. Yeah. So you have to spend money to essentially benefit from the, from the app. So it's an interesting one because then you think about, okay, well, what can be done? And we've talked a little bit about that sprinkled throughout, but even with your example, it sounds like that was a more mezzo kind of macro level impact of a loyalty program where these, because it had an end date, these other gas stations were able to then increase their prices, knowing that the customers wouldn't have any other kind of choice beyond it. But what could they have done about that? Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. When the when the thing was ending, they hiked up the prices because they knew everyone had to use their points. So they just hiked up the prices. So they were basically getting it for the same, same amount. price uh-huh. um, as they w- would have been anyway. There was yeah. no discount. Right. And I think that's part of loyalty programs. Anyhow, you might get yeah. one freebie, but then across the board, are you really saving or are they adjusting prices to make it just seem like you're saving? That's that JC Penny study <laughs> all day long. Every day, low cost was not good for people. They Mm-mm. wanted to feel like they were getting a deal. And so, yeah, sometimes with coupons and rewards programs, you you may not even actually be getting a deal beyond maybe the one-time sign up or the the annual discount that you might receive. So I think too, just being aware of typical pricing and what to expect on the things that you typically purchase Mm -hmm. to even know whether, oh, that is actually less than I would typically pay for X item. And to use it in your favor, like we've been talking about. Yeah, great to sign up, get the freebie. But if you know you're not going to go back or you know if you get multiple emails, you're not like you're going to be tempted to keep going back beyond what you normally would have, then delete it. Mm-hmm. We can absolutely hit that unsubscribe button. Yeah. Or do the unroll me like you've talked about. Yeah. Be intentional with your loyalty programs. If there's four or five that you really like, then then do it. Like participate fully. Uh, play the games, be it, you know, be in it. That's fine. But there shouldn't be more than that, right? Like if we value every loyalty program and every brand, then we really value no brand. We're just valuing consumption. Uh, so, so be intentional with your loyalty. Do you know what else we can be intentional about and have been for six plus years? Yeah, I don't need a loyalty program <laughs> to be loyal to this. The Bill of the Week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the bill of the week. Hi, Frugal Friends. This is Renee, and I wanted to share my bill of the week. I recently was approved through my employer's child care subsidy program so that my weekly child care expenses could be eliminated. That's almost three to four hundred dollars a month that I have subsidized a percentage through my employer so that my child's after school expenses uh, can be covered. So I'm ecstatic. I can save and reallocate that those funds that are being saved to an investment or even savings. Thank you, Frugal Friends. Oh, Renee, girl, that is so great. Childcare is, it's hard. You know, we want to pay for it. We want good childcare, but it's expensive. So what a great benefit from your employer. Kudos to your employer for offering that. That's amazing. Well done being aware of this, taking advantage of it. And finding out that you qualify, yes. that takes paperwork, that takes forethought, that takes intention. But now 
you are saving and now investing Mm -hmm. hundreds of dollars weekly that would have just been going to childcare. Congratulations. I'm so excited about this. And it also reminds me again, I've been talking a couple of times about kind of employee benefits. If you can't or your employer's not giving you a raise to negotiate for other things. We Mm -hmm. talked about tuition reimbursement at one point or better medical coverage or more more paid time off or childcare subsidies Mm -hmm. or health and nutrition incentives. Like you, you name it. There are so many benefits you could be asking your employer for and you've just highlighted another one for us. So yeah, thanks for that, Renee. Thanks for sharing. We're excited with you. If you all listening have a bill that you want to submit, if it's about not paying for bills because other people are paying for them or bills you're excited to pay or what it's like to pay bills when your name is Bill, frugalfriendspodcast.com slash Bill. Leave it for us. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of the Trap Nerds Podcast. This is not an episode, it's a promo. You know what it is, promo time. We in this piece. Trap nerds, trap nerds. Real nerds like you never heard. Join the Trap Nerds podcast every Monday and listen to us discuss all things inside and out of blurred culture. So what if Quentin Tarantino uh, squashes his beef with Marvel and be like, I'll okay, just see how many push shots of road we'll see I'll be down with this. <laughs> <laughs> Make you know going to be interesting. With the best movie and TV reviews from a blurred perspective. I, I think if Bo DeMeo hadn't got fired, Kevin Feige would be in trouble right now. Preach. We giving you reliable gaming news and real genuine game reviews. I'll, I'll, I'll stand for lightning. Why does she have three games? Because she a bad <laughs> I hate you so much right now. <laughs> Listen to the Trap Nurse Podcast or the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's good? It's Colleen Witt and Eating While Broke is back for Season 3. Brought to you by the Black Effect Podcast Network and iHeartRadio. We're serving up some real stories and life lessons from people like Van Lathan. TMZ was starting a tour. Harvey came and took the tour. By July, I'm on TV every day. I endear myself to the audience. He comes in, he goes, we're going to give you a raise. I think maybe a year, two years after that, I was a producer. DC Young Flight. It wasn't really no way for us to make income off of Vine like that. Mm-hmm. It was more so uh, notoriety. Once that popped off, it was like people was following it. And I didn't know how big it was. I didn't even know people was doing this on their spare time. I was don't do that, kids. That's bad. It was it was crazy that it had to be that real and that harsh. Phone thugs and harmony. Our mission was we was telling everybody in the hood, we finna go meet Easy e We about to come back and do a video. Of course, we didn't know, so we was lying like a mother. But little do we know, we speak in reality, and we gonna come back with a bus and camera crew. And many more. They're sharing the dishes that got them through their struggles and the wisdom they gained along the way. We're cooking up something special, so tune in every Thursday. Listen to Eating While Broke on the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome to Criminalia. I'm Maria Tremurki. And I'm Holly Fry. Together, we invite you into the dark corridors of history and true crime. For each season, we explore a new theme. From poisoners to stalkers, art thieves to snake oil salesmen. We uncover the secrets of history's most interesting figures, such as Walter Minx, the man who built his own submarine hoping to escape with his blackmail payout under Lake Michigan. It sounds made up, but it's 100% true. We'll explore the crimes as well as societal forces at play, from unfair sentencing to jaw-dissolving health risks. And tune in at the end of each episode as we indulge in cocktails and mocktails inspired by each story. Listen to Criminalia on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now it's time for the lightning round. All right. When do you decide to join a loyalty program and when do you decide to skip? Um, For me, I like a if I'm a frequent flyer. Right. So coffee is something I am 
part of two loyalty programs, uh, Caribou and Starbucks. And well, three, because I go to the blend a lot and they actually do have a you get rewards for every time you buy. Oh, nice. Um, So that's mostly. And then the restaurants that we eat at a lot. We don't try new restaurants. Like we Mm. are very committed to the quick service restaurants that we go to. We are not sit down dinner people like mostly just because we have kids and it's torture to sit down at a restaurant with you young children. You before, though. You really did enjoy takeout. Yeah, that is true. It is something we have not missed. Um, or maybe maybe I do miss it a little now because I can't do it. Mm. Before, I was just choosing not to, but I could. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, ne- yeah, it's all quick service for us. Um, and that's Torchy's Tacos is the main one. Mm-hmm. Torchy's. Wow. I love Torchy's Tacos. I've only been there once. It is, uh, has quickly become my love language. <laughs> wow. So. Amazing. I, and I would say that that's it. I have, I'm on some other loyalty programs. I signed up for a lot for the birthday freebies, but I am not trying to game that system. Uh-huh. Like, you know, we look forward to doing the torchies thing because we get the points so that we can get up to our free tacos. Yeah. Um, but it's actually, I mean, you have to actually buy a lot of tacos to get your free taco. Mm-hmm. And we do because we love it. Mm-hmm. So it's worth for it's worth it for us to be on the loyalty program because we were going to to buy it anyway. Yeah. That's the true answer to this question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was gonna buy it anyway and I can get rewarded for doing so. I'm on the loyalty program. Boom. But I do not let the loyalty program dictate whether I buy from a place. Yes. Yes. There Amen. you go. And that takes a, a, some time, energy, attention to be able to get to that place mm-hmm. where they're not dictating your spending, you're dictating your spending. And it's worth taking a look at. So this is why a 90-day transaction inventory is so good because look at your 90-day transaction inventory what are the expenses that you really like that are really meeting your values? And then look, does it have a rewards program that I haven't signed up for? Yep. Can I get rewarded for doing the thing that I value? Yep. Uh, yeah, that's basically my answer for when I will join a loyalty program is when it can give me a discount right in that moment without costing me money and I'm not signing up for the credit cards. Mm-hmm you know, all your stores. If you sign up for the credit card, you can get this oh discount. Oh my gosh. No, sir. Do not. Don't ever. Don't <laughs> ever let me catch you signing up for a store credit card. Yeah. But similar to how I take advantage of, you know, travel rewards credit cards, like I use it for what it can do for me, not for what I'm doing for it. And that's the same way that I approach loyalty programs is if I'm already in the store about to make a purchase, I'll think, oh, I wonder if I were to look them up online or sign up for their app, what sorts of additional discounts I could receive. That recently happened for us at Steak and Shake. I have not been to a Steak and Shake in a decade, but Eric heard from somebody that it's actually real decent for a very, very good price and can confirm Steak and Shake is the wow. best prices around for fast food. Yeah. Yeah. You're still talking like a $5 burger. Where can you get a $5 Whoa. burger? Nowhere. No how. Um, really generous fry portions, at least at the one we went to. So I just found myself at a Steak and Shake and they're like, do you have the app? I'm like, well, what would I get if I did? And they're like a free milkshake. <laughs> so here, here we are. Check me out. Download the app. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Travis, then got rid of it again. <laughs> always before any purchase, check for a coupon or an app or anything. Yeah. It's sometimes annoying. Yeah. So don't be that annoying person that. Oh well, I'm gonna be that annoying person. Do Why it not? A, in uh, do it ahead of time. Oh, ahead of time. Yes. Ahead of time. Before I not get to when the you're checkout. In line, absolutely. Right? Before I get to the checkout, this is especially true for like Michaels, Joanne's. Never pay full price never. there. They they anticipate that you're coming with the coupon. So they mm-hmm. they are they jack up their price so that by having their app, you actually pay what you should pay mm-hmm. for the oh, thing. Bed Bath and Beyond, R.I.P. Uh-huh. Rest in peace, and my friend. All of your makeup stores, 
Like make sure you do, if you're already on your way there, download the app while you're going, delete it after you, after you leave. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, thank you so much for listening. And we love reading your kind reviews. And we, again, we are bribing you to leave us reviews. If you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, screenshot it, send it to jen at frugalfriendspodcast.com or just reply, uh, you know, send it in a reply to any of the friend letters, then you will be in a drawing for a hundred dollar gift card. We will put you in there. Uh, like Liz T, who says, I just listened to your sixth anniversary special. Congrats on six years and 406 episodes. I listen to the podcast because it's playful and fun. So many others are serious, are all serious. It's a different way to get content and keep me focused on my goals that never makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong or I'm behind. I also like the mix of topics where one of you knows more about it than the other. It really gives us better information since one is asking the questions that the listener may ask. I didn't realize it was a requirement to be experts in all things to have a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) I think the best ones are when you are learning something too. Not sure why I felt like responding today, but I hope at least some of it makes you smile. Keep up the great work. Whoa. Mm, I am smiling. Liz. That's such a thoughtful review and actually yes. really helpful. Like we love all of our five star reviews, but I think especially when we receive feedback that's specific to here's what we like and keep going with this. I am. <laughs> you're really Liz calling me out. I'm usually the one who doesn't totally know and I'm asking questions. And that has taken some vulnerability on my part to not be an expert on these things. But I'm so glad to hear it's affirming to me to know that's helpful for you. So thanks, Liz, for sharing that. Thank you all for listening. If you haven't shared something, whether it's just helpful or encouraging or just a quick little note that you like the pod, please do leave that review. And again, right now, if you take that screenshot, send it to Jen at frugalfriendspodcast.com. You'll be entered to win a $100 gift card. Bye. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Siriani. All right, Jill. I had two things I wanted to talk about oh, with wow. you today. Yeah, um, you're even starting to put that into the well okay. outline. Like. So I have something interesting that I want to talk about it. And I was like, I always forget okay, when yeah. we get to the after show. Okay. And so today I want to talk about nuts. nuts. And if you were if you had to shill for big nut. Which nut would you shill for? Ooh, my favorite nut. Yeah. Oh man, that is tough. Right? Okay, should I answer first? Okay. Because I ahead. know the answer. That's why yeah. walnut. Because oh. walnut is is the radical middle, right? Like it's not peanut. It's yeah. not even like almond, which is like, you know, so basic. But it's also not like macadamia or Brazil, you know, uh-huh. it's not like up there, Easier unacceptable. To sell. Mm-hmm. Walnut is, she is elevated, mm-hmm. but still accessible. Okay. Yeah. And tell us all of the ways you like to use walnut. I love walnuts, mostly in baked oatmeal. I love doing a baked oatmeal and I'll do a different fruit and nut combo. And that's where I had the thought of this because I was, you know, I was doing strawberries and I was like, mm what nut do I want to do with strawberries? Mm. And because I don't typically, typically with strawberry, I'll do chocolate. That, you know, I don't typically yeah. do a nut there. Um, and I did, I went with pecan for that yeah. one. And it was a good choice. No, I went with almond, mm-hmm. uh, sliced almonds for that one. It was a good choice. Good. Um, but I do, I, I found myself not wanting to use the walnuts because I feel like they're special, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Not too special to where I like wouldn't buy them or I'd be nervous to buy them. But like, I, w- I want to use it for a special oatmeal, the walnuts. Yeah. Oh, this is, you're making me realize, I, I'm I'm going through the Rolodex of nuts in uh-huh. my head and realizing how much I appreciate each one for their different purposes. Right, yeah. And how difficult it is to just pick one. If you're going to force me, I'm backed into a corner. Uh-huh, you literally are. I would probably say almond, but 
like neck and neck with cashew. Oh yeah, cashew. But she's she's a she's wonderful, a good so versatile. One. Yeah, so versatile. Yeah. Oh man, now you're making me wonder if I would change my mind. But I just I feel like because you also said I'd have to shill for them, right? Meaning I've got to convince other people to spend on it, <laughs> and so I think I could more easily get other people on board with all the different things almonds could do before I could get them on board with cashews. Yes. Do you either like cashews or you don't. Almonds are just almonds raw, almonds roasted, almonds chocolate so covered. So many flavors. Almonds ground into peanut butter. Like it, <laughs> into peanut start, butter. <laughs> into butter. On almond, almond butter. butter. There's there's a lot slivered almonds on salad. Yeah, there's a lot That's that where I, I do think most I of my could almonds. get people with mm-hmm. an almond. I do. I love an almond. Yeah, yeah. I use them a lot uh, more than walnuts. Um, so yeah, I think you've gone with the utilitarian uh-huh. route, and I've gone with the luxury route. Yeah, but still approachable luxury, approachable which we love. Luxury, yeah, because yeah, we're not doing. We the, are not the macadamia. Uh huh. Yeah, we're not. Or the yeah. what's the other version of almond? The ma- ma- I want to say macaroon. That's not it. Do you know what I'm <laughs> talking know. about? No, oh, I don't know. No. There's another type of almond. Yes, it's the fancy type. Oh, I'm just gonna have quick, to Google, Google. But I forgot fancy about cashew. Almond. Cashew is so. Versatile. Marcona. Marcona. Marcona almond. Oh, yeah. Which I do like on a charcuterie board, but I'm not shilling for them. They're too much. Right. They are extra. Uh huh. You know, it's like, yeah. Wearing but maybe a- around the holidays. Like, if, I, if I'm already shilling for almond and it's just a quick step over around the holidays mm-hmm. to talk, talk Marcona and champagne, yes. then, then I'm here for it. But mm-hmm. mainly, I'm in my sneaks. Shilling for almonds. Eric eats so many almonds too. He does. He yeah. he particularly loves raw almonds, which he turned me on to. Usually I'm just like, you're insane oh, wow. and you should be on a watch list. And then I realized raw almonds do have such a nice little buttery flavor. I love a little salt, but I think the salt brings out the buttery flavor. Mm-hmm. So but you can you can have both, and I'm still making money off of almonds. So <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. I'm not making much for walnuts because I like nervous to use it. <laughs> I'm just, just bad. buy I'm them bad at and shilling. keep them. Yeah. Oh, here's something. I keep nuts in my freezer. The nuts I don't use that often, so they don't, don't go know. rancid. Yeah. So, yeah. so I don't. I have usually walnuts, maybe pistachios, pecans. Those aren't ones I typically snack on, but I will like cook or bake with. Mm -hmm. And so I keep them in my freezer. Wow. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Nuts. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Trap Nerds Podcast. This is not an episode. I'm pretty sure this is a promo. You know what it is. We in this piece. Trap nerds, trap nerds. Real niggas like you never heard. We giving you reliable gaming news with the best movie and TV reviews from a blur perspective. All things inside and out of blurred culture. culture. Listen to the Trap Nerds Podcast or the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's good? It's Colleen Witt and Eating While Broke is back for season three. Brought to you by the Black Effect Podcast Network and iHeartRadio. We're serving up some real stories and life lessons from people like Van Lathan, DC Young Fly, Bone Thugs and Harmony, and many more. They're sharing the dishes that got them through their struggles and the wisdom they gained along the way. We're cooking up something special. So tune in every Thursday. Listen to Eating While Broke on the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. Presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Parents around the world choose the Sleep Tight Stories podcast to help their children fall asleep with ease and stay asleep longer. Earlier bedtimes means you get happier children and a bit more time to yourself at the end of a busy day. Listen to Sleep Tight Stories on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. For a bedtime routine you'll miss when they're grown, sleep tight stories.